Awesome. So this is just going to be probably like 20 minutes. Um, just looking at um, what are the key pieces of math up? There's a lot in there. Um, and I'm just going to start with, um, actually, I remember, I remember when we piloted, I was, I was in a, uh, one of the schools that piloted math up a number of years ago before it went system wide. Um, and, uh, it was just, it was hard for people to define what it was. So we're going to, I'm just going to start with, um, I'm going to, I'm going to skip this for no our worries. sake. <laughs> um, just cause that's, um, and then I'm going to just start with, um, what it is. Okay. because that can frame how we use it for people and not to feel overwhelmed. Um, and then we're just going to look at two, three pieces, really. The topic planning pages. Um, mm -hmm. There's like a little overview video that Marion Small does, and there's some checklists and things that you can use, um, assessments tools that you can use, which is kind of handy if you're looking for that. And then the lesson pages, which is what everybody uses, the three-part lesson. There's a little piece of every page that um, is and the point is and it's so easy to miss but uh, I found it really crucial like really important for me to be able to like filter through all the content that math up is using okay. um, so I'm gonna look at that and then some of the options for activities and maybe give you a chance to, to try it at the end so perfect That's the plan so th what is math up so it's basically like a teacher resource for delivering thoughtful math content. You know, Marion Small has kind of taken a lot of time to think about the context, the, the math questions and the numbers and all this stuff um, mm -hmm. in a three-part lesson structure. It's super helpful. Um, one of the things that has been an early misnomer is that it's this standalone math program. Like I can just, just do this and nothing else. Um, and, and that's not to say that there isn't a lot of stuff in there. It's just to say that, you know, you don't have to. And a lot of people feel like, I will, I've just given math up, so I have to do everything in this. And it's, no, it's, it's like a resource. If somebody gave you um, a, a Marion Small book, you're not gonna go through it cover to cover and do everything. So it's not standalone. And it's also not like foolproof, right? It, it can also, it has its own upsides and downsides depending on your class and your students and so whatever. So big picture is like, you know what? Trust yourself as an educator. This is a good because resource. Sometimes I find yeah. that there's almost too much on it. There's way too, I'm glad you said that. There's, yeah. there's way too much on it. There's way, but and I, I think, think teachers that are like, okay, so we're gonna do this and they try to get through everything. And it's like, no, you pick and choose what you need to use, right? Exactly, and that's where the end the point is comes in. Mm -hmm. um, because you cannot use, even if just focusing on the three part lessons with the prompts, nobody has a five hour math class to do yeah. every single prompt and if you did your students would die right like so <laughs> so no yeah there's way too much in there it's almost intentional because i think they they want it to be a resource that's uh you know fulsome <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's where the what it is comes up where it's like it's important that we know that it is not it's a resource it's not a step-by-step -step thing that we would do every day type of thing so Awesome. So let's jump in. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into the topic planning pages. Switch my tabs. So I'm just I pulled into a grade seven class because I didn't know where people would be, but the the structure for topic planning is the same for all grades. So mm -hmm. um, what grades what grades do you have? Um, well, for average? summer school, I have grade six. Yeah, grade six. Okay. So let's jump into grade six, just so you know where um, it would be. Uh, or where you'd get into the topic pages. So the, there's pathways that they can that you can set up. I wouldn't do that because that's just intended to be uh, like a long range plan, the pathways. Mm -hmm. And because our our board is using our own WRDSP long range plans, um, it, this is more like a resource that you'd jump in. So if you're doing um, representing whole numbers in grade six, you jump into that. Mm -hmm. The topic planning page is. Uh, a pretty nice place to start. It gives you an overview of the topic. She has a quick, she always has these three or four minute videos in a lot of places. There's tons of them. Some of them you can watch if you want, but the overview of the topic is helpful because it gives you like a big picture of what she's thinking is important for representing whole numbers in grade six, right? Um, so that's handy. And then 
um, you'll notice um, on the right hand side, there's all these resources and you probably mentioned when you're looking for the number lines and all these things. So all the different resources will be there. And the one that is kind of buried um, is the observational checklist and things like that. And I don't know if she has one for forms view all oh, there we go keeps going <laughs> right it's at the very bottom and it's kind of um it's if i was going to look at assessment mm -hmm. this is one of the ones that's just really cool again it it opens up in a doc which is really weird it's a, a doc egg so i can't really show it uh right now but it it's basically a table that has uh, spots for names and all the different observational things that you can look at during this uh, topic. Just super helpful. Um, it would be nice if they had a Google Doc like they always had, but I think they're kind of catching up on those things as we talked about earlier. So that's a topic page. Um, it's uh, usually missed because we're jumping into lessons specifically, but if I was gonna look at two things in the topic page, it would be like the overview for that topic and then that observational checklist, which is really nice for kind of thinking about what am I looking for for st when students are working through this. Every topic will have a diagnostic task, and then at the end of it, like an assessment for learning. Um, again, they are cumbersome, they're fulsome. Um, it, it would take, your math program would just stretch for years if you're doing all of these tasks. So it's a pick and choose thing. Um, and some of them are, uh, you know, again, professional judgment. Sometimes it's 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 better to have a diagnostic uh, to look at diagnostics within the experience of the classroom rather than to have a separate task all the time. So if but if you are thinking, you know, what I could really use a diagnostic task for this topic because I'm um, I have a feeling students are going to struggle with this, or I really want to get a sense of where students are at, then it's there for us to use. But I wouldn't use it for every topic. Well, both of the teachers that I worked with um, for the diagnostic on uh, decimals, they both took a little bit for a map up just to see, to well, extend. Yeah. yeah. Um, because we did it in the small groups. And so the one question that we were given really didn't give you enough to have an idea of what they could do with decimals over a 40 minute period. Yeah. And so that's handy, right? To know that, oh, I have a diagnostic area that I can go and pull when I, when I feel like I really want one. Um, but again, it's like that whole idea of like, you know, you have the freedom to pick and choose what you want to do. So it's it's important. Um, Can I ask one quick question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. While we are on that. Um, the one thing I've been noticing is when I'm further down, like on the actual tasks and it has like the question and then it says like visible and I guess invisible, oh, yes. I would assume. It yes. doesn't always go away. Cause I'm assuming it's the blue part or at least no, that's what No, no, it's, it, this is, see, it's not clear. Mm -hmm. What the visible and visible is she's, um, MathUp is kind of designed in the classroom. Um, the, well, the way I've used it is uh, it's not by by giving students individual uh, um, sheets of stuff. I've, yeah. I usually project. So if you're going to project, you click on this button and it opens up a new window. Mm -hmm. And this window is what the class would see. Okay. So for that task. So, so that's what's changed because I was looking at it a couple of years ago and you could make it go away so I can make a nice screenshot and then use that within my slides. Yeah, yeah. So let's say I don't need number one for that. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to, well, let's go back. <laughs> I'm keep switching. So I've I've toggled off number one because I don't want to do that for my with my class as a prompt. And when I click this, it should jump to number two. There it is. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, that's the visible and visible because it's kind of designed so you can project it and give your class a prompt together um, instead of having to like uh, give mm -hmm. it individually type of thing. So yeah, that's what that is for. It's not for the answers. And, th and the reason why you see the blue answers here because this is like the teacher version. Yeah, so you can I think see it used to do that. So this must have been an update within the last like year or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, digital, it right? may have been, yeah. Yeah, so that and then this shows up in every prompt across all the the three-part lessons and all that so awesome thank it, you good, oh my pleasure that's a good question so topic planning page and then there's the lesson page that we're going to look into um so if we jump into lesson one here representing hundreds there's the planning part of lesson one um this is the end the point is that i was talking about and this shows up in every segment 
from planning to minds on action consolidate and and she focuses on explaining why she's chosen certain things or what to, what is what is what is the point of this task or why did she choose this or why did you do that right mm -hmm. um so she'll explain like you know students use large whole numbers they need a sense of magnitude of the numbers as well as a sense of where those numbers are used in the real world this lesson focuses on relating numbers and hundreds of thousands to more familiar benchmark numbers. So it's like she kind of hones in on what really matters. So then when we, let's say I'm jumping into Minds On, about the learning goal, I'm jumping to Minds On, I can, when I'm starting to pick and choose, I'm like, oh man, I don't, I don't like this context or I don't wanna do this piece or this seems like really long, I really have to boil it down. What do I wanna focus on? Pulling the, connecting to the, and the point is, it's really helpful. Um, and we did a, a year or so ago, I used to be at Coronation and we, maybe two years, two years, oh man, maybe it's three years now. Anyway, <laughs> time so you were with JR. Or... Pardon? You were with JR. Yeah, yeah, I know JR, she's great. Oh. I was at adding you the year that she transitioned to a VP at Coronation. Oh, cool, that's great. We she were so lucky, we were really lucky to have her. We were, I was, I was, we were really happy about that. I think um, anyone is lucky to have her. She's amazing. We stole her from you guys. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, Sorry. But she, um, no, no problem. That's great. So we just like did a bit of a, a study of how this can help us. And we found it was like, if we had to focus on one thing in math up to not ignore, we mm -hmm. found that this is it, right? Okay. You can ignore lots of other stuff, but when you're like, when you want to jump into, I want to use this minds on, I'm going to read the end the point is, and then decide how it fits or which ones I, which parts of it I can take. Because we found that when we were removing certain questions mm -hmm. without understanding her purpose, sometimes then we were removing the important math experience away from the kids, right? And so we thought, in our in our in our judgment, we're like, oh, you know what? We we don't really have enough time to do question three and four. We're just going to do question one and two. But we found that sometimes when we did that, we were like, ooh, you know what? Actually, one and two wasn't what they needed. It's three and four because this is why she designed this question this way. It's like, oh, okay, this is what my class needs. So it really is really helpful. And you'll see that she has, and and the point is for every part. Um, and she sections them with the sections of questions sometimes, right? And she'll say, well, question one was done like this. She even has, and the point is for the consolidation, she'll say, this is why I've asked this question. You know, consolidation question one, does spark a discussion about understanding the magnitude of large numbers. So she'll tell you why certain things that are included in the consolidation questions that she would, she would have um, the class do. Now, one of the things um, that, we always mention that goes along with this is a lot of times consolidation gets kind of we'll do minds on an action and consolidation kind of gets not gets not thrown away but like we run out of time and don't finish it mm -hmm. um and we always want to say you know it's it's better to like stop the action before kids are all finished or when they're in the middle of it to consolidate before the end of the day even if it's something that we're gonna come back to, you're like, it's really important, I really like it, we're making good progress, I wanna come back to it tomorrow, that's fine, but it's mm -hmm. important 15 minutes before to like stop and consolidate um, and and then go back to it tomorrow or stop and consolidate and we got the math thinking and that consolidation out of it, we're gonna keep going, right, the next day, which is fine. And then um, with the three-part lesson, the your turn is like the purposeful practice. Um, so you, rarely do people finish a minds on action and consolidation in one day. Maybe you would. Um, mm -hmm. Never minds on cons action and consolidation and never your turn together. It's just like there's so much stuff there that you wouldn't be able, you can't condense that into one day, you know, realistically. So that's something important to know when using math up. Mm -hmm. mm. um, so that's, that's the lesson pages, kind of an, an overview. Um, as always, that format on the right hand side gives you all the kind of printables, black line masters and uh, activities and games. Also some success, success criteria if you're looking for specific assessment help um, that goes with that topic. So that's that's handy. Um, oh, I wasn't showing you the screen there. Huh. It's okay. I'm going, going back and forth. That right hand, I was just talking about this right okay, hand. Okay, thank you. 
you can also put notes in here, which is really cool. Like if you want to remind yourself of something or, or capture a note about this for your class and it gets saved in your account. Just oh, that's cool. That's new also. Yeah, that's kind of handy. Um, okay, so that's lessons. Um, the activities page is the last thing we're going to look at. And they keep building. This is something they keep building out. Uh, the big, the big ticket items for activities you'll probably use is for number talks. If you're looking for some specific number talks that um, for your grade, so it automatically because I'm in grade six starts in grade six, and I can select a category, or they're all numbered. The number talks from one to like got 75 of them, right? So I can sift through and, and look for a number talk that has to do with the topic that I'm discussing. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's kind of handy. Uh, there's some really cool uh, wonder tasks and brain benders. Um, those are fun too to look at. So they kind of involve more contextualized situations that are not connected to a specific math topic, but nice. help students make connections across um, in the new curriculum, there's, and the ministry is really pushing to, not pushing, but like uh, helping us, you know, de silo the math strands and help them integrate together. Um, that's something we're doing in our long range plans as well. So things like this are helpful to help students make connections across strands. So that's kind of the big picture of how you might uh, navigate around uh, math up. Uh, she's, there's always professional learning topics and things where her videos, um, Marion Small's videos are there where she mm -hmm. can walk to specific, specific things. There's tons of stuff in there. So, but um, again, big picture is to pick and choose what you think is important. And the big message is that end the point is really helps you figure out why is this activity set up this way and what which of it can I use and which of it doesn't really apply to my students. And the activities are relatively new as well, aren't they? Because I don't remember yeah. seeing that before either. Yeah, they, they really are. Um, then they, It was really at the beginning, it was number talks and uh, wonder tasks. Now they've they've done a bunch of work around kindergarten stuff, games and puzzles are, are in there. Um, and then the, the, the cross trans, there's, there's so many, there's so many cross train tasks and things like that, that they're adding. So I think they're constantly updating the activity section. It's just, uh, can be overwhelming, but really, uh, the, the one that you'd use the most or refer to the most and the one that we ref reference in the, the math long range plans is the number talks. Okay. Um, so yeah, lots, lots and lots of stuff there. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much the big picture overview of Matha.